Residents of the Kursk region were shown fragments of broadcasts from federal Russian television channels which called for carpet bombing, raising their region to the ground. Ukrainian military decided to conduct an experiment and showed these shots to residents recording their reaction on video. The fragments shown are broadcasts from Channel 1 as well as a talk show where Russian deputies and experts propose to complete destruction of everything, including local residents that are located in the territories occupied by the Ukrainian armed forces. In order to drive out the enemy, we need to destroy everything that is there, said Russian Duma deputy Zatulin. At the same time, Russians were horrified looking at the plans for the liberation of the region that are being made in Moscow. This is absolutely horrific, said one of the Russian women commenting on what she saw. Moreover, the local Russian authorities of the Sudzansky district of the Kursk region made a new statement. Local deputy Alexander Kramarenko, in an appeal to the state Duma deputy Kaplan Panesh, stated that Moscow did not evacuate residents during the offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces due to the military's demand to avoid panic. The head of the district claims that the military command urged him not to allow panic among the population. In practice, this resulted in the people being simply abandoned to their fate. In this case, press secretary of the Russian dictator Putin, Dmitry Peskov, commented on the information of the Russian mass media that relatives of residents of Sudza in the Kursk region asked Putin and Zelensky for a corridor for the evacuation of civilians, Russian media reported earlier. According to Peskov, the Kremlin allegedly did not receive requests for evacuation from residents of the city of Sudza, which is currently controlled by Ukrainian armed forces. To be honest, this is the first time I've heard about this. Unfortunately, we haven't seen anything and haven't received anything about it, he said. It is worth noting that on September the 13th, 2024, the Russian publication Kommersant published information that residents of the Sudzansky district of the Kursk region appealed to the presidents of Russia and Ukraine with a request to open a humanitarian corridor for the evacuation of civilians as soon as possible. The appeal was accompanied by a list of names of relatives and friends, a total of 186 people, including seven children. Later, this message was published by other Russian media. By the way, a video message from residents of the village of Guevo in the Kursk region also appeared on the internet. People also appealed to the Russian authorities, but the Kremlin did not respond, and the local authorities, the protégés of dictator Putin, simply abandoned them and did not evacuate them. Russia's war against Ukraine has now lasted more than two and a half years, fueling international calls for a political settlement. But the peace terms remain unacceptable to Kiev and Moscow. Putin and Zelensky have publicly said they are open to talks, but neither has given up on their long-standing goals or on winning, says Rajan Menon, a political analyst at The Guardian who has visited Ukraine four times during the war. Could a combination of war, weariness and fear of escalation pave the way for negotiations that will end the war? I am skeptical, the author writes. Menon notes that morale among Ukrainians, either at the front or in the rear, has not dropped to a level that leaves Zelensky no choice but to end the fighting and seek peace on Russia's terms. Nevertheless, the Kursk operation is further evidence that Kiev remains determined to continue the fight. Indeed, Zelensky and his commanders believe that these gains can be consolidated if Britain and the United States allow Ukraine to use their long-range missiles to strike Russian airfields, the political scientist adds. Earlier, Ukraine's ambassador to India, Alexander Polistruk, said that Kiev wants New Delhi to moderate the talks and use its ties with Russia to bring Moscow to the negotiating table. Polistruk added that Ukraine has offered India to hold a second peace summit by November 2024 to end the war. However, it is unclear whether New Delhi will agree to this. According to Bloomberg, some of Ukraine's allies are starting to talk about how the fight against Russia's invasion might end, raising concerns in several other Western capitals that these efforts could lead to Kiev being forced into a premature ceasefire.
As part of their discussions of strategy for the next year, officials are more seriously gaming out how a negotiated end to the conflict and an off-ramp could take shape, according to people familiar with the matter who asked for anonymity to discuss private deliberations. Negotiations to end the fighting will have to resolve a key issue, how to ensure that Ukraine does not become vulnerable to future Russian attack while reassuring its allies that they will not be drawn into a direct conflict with the Kremlin. Any talks will also have to overcome the bitter legacy of the Minsk agreements, which were agreed upon after the seizure of Crimea in 2014. The article says, one European defense official also said European governments shared concerns that Putin would exploit Western uncertainty after the deal was struck. Some allies believe the time between the U.S. election in November and the presidential inauguration next January could provide a window of opportunity, with the ongoing Biden administration having more political leeway to strike a deal. The trajectory of the military conflict in the next two months will be quite steep. In the basic scenario, military actions will continue after the inauguration. But the likelihood of alternative scenarios is also high, the Bloomberg source added.